In a world where everyone starts talking about cloud native, I decided to talk about memory consumption. Um, the reason for this is because not all services can or will be cloud native. So what happens if you have a service that has to exist, but at the same time, you want to keep it minimalized in terms of cost by not having an oversized instance. So we're going to try and see if we can reduce something simple like a, a batch import from one existing value to another just for fun. So we're going to run through that example and we're going to do basically three different versions of the same thing just to see what happens with the memory. And that's the subject of this video. So we're going to start off with something relatively basic and straightforward here. Um, we're basically going to take our CSV file, which has 1 million entries. That's correct. 1 million. And we're going to load it into an array. So very straightforward process. Um, probably the simplest one, because we're just going to process all the objects straight into the array in one hit. So this will be our baseline. So this will give us the best possible performance for that import. Now it's going to come with a little bit of a downside to this. And you're going to see what I mean in a second, where we're looking at the PowerShell memory consumption here. And as you can see, it's going up quite rapidly. And while it's a fast process to do the import this way, it's a very memory intensive process too. And it actually takes about 48 seconds in the end for the whole process to run, but it also takes 3.2 gigabytes. Now that's not great. So let's see if we can't improve on that number and reduce the amount of memory that we're consuming. Now, I can't guarantee I can get it faster. I'm sure there are ways, but we're just going to focus on, let's see if we can reduce the amount of memory. So let's go ahead and do probably the simplest thing that we can do at this point, which is start processing this in a different way. So we can do the import, but instead of throwing everything directly into the array, which would be one option, which we've already tried and we, we saw what the effect was there. We had 3.2 gigabytes of memory. So let's try a new one. So here we're going to create an array in advance and we're going to process for each object. And we're just going to tick that off. Now, I'm going to say that this is a bad idea. And the reason it's a bad idea is because of how arrays work and processing 1 million objects in arrays it's really bad for performance. And to give you an example of this, um, we're gonna go ahead and process a different one. So here I'm using uh, stacks. Now stacks are much faster than arrays. Now I'm just gonna point here that we're using a stack uh, as a string. String is a bad way of doing this and that's why I wanted to point this out. Because if you have information here, which is basically a hash table and you put it into a string, you end up with this concatenated information. So that that's something you want to avoid. Otherwise you will end up with all kinds of post data processing issues. So don't use strings, although I know most of the examples out there use strings. Now there's a very quick and easy way to fix that, which is that you use hash tables. So that's, it's a really straightforward. You basically just change a line of text like this, where you have the value here and we say new collection generic stack is hash table. That's it. That's all you gotta do. And then we create our hash table, same as we do it usually. And if you really, really need to use the array at the end, you can create the array from the stack. So we're going to go ahead and run this and prove exactly how much better this is by just running it back to back with our existing array collection. And as you can see, our array is up to 38,000 objects and it's kind of started to slow down. And our stacks is already at 30,000 objects and is catching up and has now officially passed our array. So the answer here is use stacks, don't use arrays, arrays are slow. So we're going to kill off the array and um, continue with our stack. Now, obviously this is going to take a little while to run. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward the video a little bit so we can skip to the end um, and see, you know, basically how the, the overall memory consumption looks. So we're 
doing probably uh, about a thousand times the actual speed here. Uh, just for those of you who are interested, the runtime in real world is six point two sorry six six minutes twenty one seconds for this to run compared with our previous forty eight seconds. So it's a lot slower. But if we look at the memory consumption, and here we get to the end, it's 1.2 gigabytes. 1.2. Remember, our previous number was 3.2. So this is a massive improvement in terms of RAM consumption. We're basically down to under half. So this is an alternative way of running it. But this is not the final option. There, there is another one as well. So this one's a little bit more complex but we want to discuss it. So one of the things that still consumes a lot of memory is the way that PowerShell handles objects. So the last option I'm going to present here is to create a completely new object class. So here we go ahead and we create a class. I'm going to call my class sales. We define what those totals are in terms of dates, frames, and then we run those through um, filters. So we're going to basically cr dynamically create a filter. So we have the import that gets sent to our filter, which basically converts it into our class object here. And then for each of our class objects, we go ahead and create our hash tables, which eventually get put into our array at the end. So same basic principle to what we're doing, but we're just changing the object type. Now, because I've got the additional overhead of the processing, this will run slower. But it does have one advantage, which is it's going to consume a little bit less memory. So keep in mind, our previous run was six minutes. This one, I can already tell you, because I'm recording this obviously after the event, uh, takes about 14 minutes, 48 seconds. So it's much slower because you've got that additional conversion going on. But because it's using a class, so we've already defined the object type and we're not using the generic PowerShell objects, those are going to be smaller than the regular type. The result here is that we're actually going to save a bit more memory. So instead of going for 1.3 gigabytes, um, which was our previous number, we're actually going to be able to drop it down a teensy bit. We're going to come in at roughly about 1.1. So we're going to save 200 megabytes in the process. Now, obviously, we've lost a lot of speed. But again, if you're processing 1 million rows, which, no offense, but most people aren't processing 1 million rows that often. And even if they are, the question is how fast you need them. So if you're processing them, let's say, once an hour, 15 minutes, not a biggie. You've still got 45 minutes of processing time. And you've saved yourself 200 meg, which means you can run other processes. And that becomes in particularly useful if you think about the sizing of how some of these instances are made. Because let's say the difference is, okay, I've got one uh, and a half gigabytes of RAM on a small VM versus the next tier up is three gig. And our original um, sizing came in at 3.2. So that wouldn't even fit on the next size up. So we'd have to go another size up. So we are actually being able to save two tiers potentially of VM sizing, although we've lost the speed, but at the same time, it's still finishing within the time frame that we want. So as long as the, your time frame is reasonable, you can actually save costs on your cloud consumption by having a smaller VM. And that's kind of the, the, the point of this video is to look at how much money could you save by just simply saving on the RAM rather than trying to go for the processing speed. And that's a question that I think doesn't really get answered or asked enough. The is faster always better or is more efficient, less memory consuming code a better option? Either way, I'll leave that question with you.